Assalamu alaikum, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Or rather, peace be unto you. I would like to start by thanking you for being here today, for taking the time out from your families, for taking the time out from your jobs, and for simply taking the time out from your daily lives, time that you won't get back. And for that, I thank you and appreciate your presence today. Furthermore, I want you to understand exactly why you are here today, why your presence is warranted in this court of law. You've been gathered here today to give a true verdict to an indictment for murder. That means it's going to be your job your sole responsibility to come together and find the defendant, Kareem Jenkins, not guilty or guilty. The indictment sets forth that on the evening of June 21st, 2010, at the China Express restaurant located on Broad Street Road, which is but a few blocks from this courthouse, Kareem Jenkins, whom is a known narcotics dealer and a multiple felon fired one 40 caliber round bullet, striking Miss Parker in the temple and fatally wounding her. And as Miss Parker lie lifeless in a pool of her own blood with one footprint in that blood to tell her story, Kareem Jenkins is apprehended a short time later, figuratively speaking, with Miss Sarah Ann Parker's blood on his hands. Now, to this indictment, the defendant has pled not guilty. See, what the defense is going to do, they're going to try to paint a picture for you. They're going to try to paint a picture and try and make you believe that although the defendant is a known drug dealer, he's also a loving father who is incapable of such a heinous crime. They may even try and make you believe that Kareem Jenkins wasn't even there during the time of this murder. All I'm requesting from you is that you analyze the evidence to the best of your ability. And if that evidence shows that Mr. Kareem Jenkins is guilty, then you should find him so to the maximum that Virginia law allows. See, here in Virginia, we believe in an eye for an eye. And what that means is, if you take a life, then you should be subjected to the death penalty. And why is that, you may ask? Why is that, you may ask? It's because who are you to play God? Who is this man to play God? 
It is God's responsibility to breathe life into an individual. And it is God's responsibility to take life. It is not man's responsibility. So justice lies in your hands here today. It is up to you to find justice for Miss Sarah Ann Parker's husband of 40 years. It is up to you today to find justice for Miss Sarah Ann Parker's children who will never see their mother again. So I ask you to do the right thing. I'm only the messenger. I can only present the evidence to the best of my ability. And what you do with it is up to you. Prosecution rests. Your witness. Your witness. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the prosecutor has put on a very great show. He had me believing almost. He gave you all the evidence, but he's giving you no facts. There's no facts on this case. Sure, he had blood on his hands, but why can't we believe that maybe he did hear a gunshot go over there to see if she's okay, touch her, he got blood on his hands to check and see if she was breathing. When you hear the sirens, he ran. Of course he would run. Look where he comes from. Look at the neighborhood he lives in. The mindset of the neighborhood that he lives in. They're not friends of the police. Yes, he has had a crime before, but he's paid his debt. It should be illegal, actually, to even mention that in a new case. But of course, the system allows it to happen but he's paid that debt. Do you really believe that this man who took on the responsibility of raising his child would have an argument with the person and then hours later harbor that anger so much that he would kill this woman? That doesn't make much sense. This man is struggling trying to provide for him and his child. This man constantly thinks about his child. He is out here day after day looking for work so he can take care of his child. He has eviction notice. He has light skin turned off. His water is off. He's struggling to raise his child. And he took on this responsibility. That tells me that this man has a caring heart. A caring heart not to want to go and kill someone. He doesn't have any type of violence on his record. It doesn't show that he would go out and do something as heinous as this. It shows that he's a man trying to make some money. He was arrested for a drug charge, trying to make some money. That doesn't mean that he's a killer. That doesn't mean that he has anger or hatred. It just means that he's a man trying to take care of his family. Could you, in good conscience, convict this man knowing that there's reasonable doubt that maybe he did not do this. You, what reasonable doubts you ask? The reasonable doubts is the gun was left on the scene and his fingerprints was not on the gun. Maybe he had on gloves. If this was the OJ case. If it doesn't fit, you must acquit. They found no glove. And if the blood was on his hands, that would mean that his fingerprints should be on the gun. That is a reasonable doubt. A very strong reasonable doubt. This man's life is on the line. Would you really feel it in your heart? Could you live with yourself to send this man to death, knowing beyond a shadow of a doubt that he committed this crime? Or would you, in some back of your mind, somewhere in the back of your mind, tell yourself, maybe he didn't do it. Maybe he did see her hear the shots and see her slumped over in a pool of blood and go and try to offer some assistance. Maybe he did hear the police coming and got a little scared and ran. His fingerprints wasn't on the gun. We must not forget this. His fingerprints was not on the gun. Could you live with yourself convicting this man to death with all these doubts? You have to ask yourself, is your job 
to make this decision. I rest my case. You've listened to a long and complicated case of murder in the first degree. Premeditated murder is the most serious charge tried in the United States. You've heard the testimony and statements from both sides. You've had the law read to you as it applies in this case. It's now your responsibility to sit down and separate the facts from the fiction. One woman is dead, and one man is on trial for that murder. If there's a reasonable doubt in your mind, then you must bring back a verdict of not guilty. If, however, there is no doubt, then you must, in good conscience, bring back a verdict of guilty. However you decide, your verdict must be unanimous. In the event that you find the accused guilty, the bench will not entertain a recommendation for mercy. The death sentence is mandatory in this case. Says doesn't make for him to shoot this woman and then 
go and touch the body. Exactly. 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 Exactly
that he lives and he's from that neighborhood. He's from that he's neighborhood. He lives listen. there. He sells drugs there. You listen remember? instead of talking. No, I'm not going to listen because you're crazy to say that he's not guilty. A black man with prior convictions and, and a, a white woman laying there dead, I would have ran too whether I did it or not. Exactly. exactly. Right. So now everybody's jumping on the end of the Okay, 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 okay. I'll tell you what. I you need to get on it too. No, absolutely. I tell you guys what, let's just vote again anonymously. I won't vote. And if we get 11 votes, Guilty, then we turn it to guilty verdict. But if we get one not guilty, we sit and we talk about this some more. Everybody agree? Yeah. Yeah. All right, that's fair enough. Yeah. 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 Get your budget. Put it on the paper. All right. Okay, am I turning it over? Okay. Maybe you need to sell drugs, Mr. Director. <laughs> no, more important. Are we filming? Pass it all down. <laughs> Guilty. 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 Not guilty. Mm. Oh, who did that? Who can do? Who and who do? Who's going to give us your own name here tonight now? Oh, Somebody oh, in your life. Oh, I know exactly what it was. You just don't get it, do you? Me? Huh? You just don't get it, do you? How you know it was me? Oh, I know it was you. How you know? Because you think like you think. You know what? I know. Since we've been in this room, you, since we've been in this room, it's been the same thing. Look, you're making too many excuses for this guy. Just you, just you need to watch how you move your hands when you talk. Make the hard ticket. Excuses. Hey, 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 hey,
and I'm looking at my daughter in the car because, you know, she's looking worried I'm surrounded by these guys, you know. And um, he said, uh, I think you do. And he tried to reach in my pocket, you know, and I smacked his hand away. And the minute I did that, I just got plummeted. I was just beat down, you know. And I can hear my daughter in the car screaming, you know. So, uh, I, 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 yes, it is. And, and I know how those guys are. I know how they lie. I know how they run in packs like hungry wolves. I mean, I that's just the way they that didn't happen to any one of us. Like, that's so, like that, but that's anyway. his lifestyle. So you generalize he fits the description. Of people because exactly. of your one experience. I'm, wow. just, I'm just saying, from his background, he's very capable of doing what I believe he did. Everybody here was and that was take someone's life. Blood on his hands. He the one that ran. I bet she felt like a real punk bitch after you got beat up the door. Oh, now that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to tell you. And we got to go to the end. I'm just saying. Calm down. The issue here. You're about to be there. That's the bottom line. You see that? Exactly. The issue here is the issue is about your crime and not this case. No, it it's definitely about the case, but it just helps me understand much more that he is capable of doing this. His kind do it all the time. It's nothing new. His kind. Yeah. Someone needs to go to jail. Have you ever been accused of something that you didn't do? Well, I have. All my life. All my life. I'm sorry. It was. It was Christmas. Million times again. May I please have the floor? Let Kendall speak, please. Well, I'm telling you, I finished talking. Jesus. Let's go. Well, it, was, it was Christmas, okay? And I had three kids. No money for Christmas. Not even a Christmas turkey. Wow. Okay? And I was feeling kind of down. So I went out to the bar, you know, to just drink my troubles away. And as I was walking towards the bar, I saw this guy running. Police chasing him. He's running. All of a sudden, he throws his bag in my direction. And I, I couldn't believe it. I, I unzipped the bag, I looked inside, and inside the bag was all this money. Wow. You kept it. Wow. wow. I just, you kept it. Well, I just began to just thank God that now I was going to finally be able to give my kids a nice Christmas. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I started running home, you know, just to, to share this with my kids. And, you know, all of a sudden, I have all these police behind me, sirens. You know, and I get pulled over, next thing you know, I'm on trial. Was it her money? Anyway? Murder and robbery. It was never yours. Wasn't it your money anyway? Was and was the, only, the only thing that got me off was the fact that they just couldn't find the murder weapon. Mm -hmm. oh, God. I understand how you feel when everything and you're trying to, you know, you feel sorry for the guy, but I still think that he's guilty, he should go to jail. You know what I'm saying? Because. What about the drug dealing part? You don't, that's because he killed it. I mean, that's just another thing that he's done. He that's killed his like thing. He's but he's still going to go sell drugs again. Whether he, at this say you say he's not guilty. He's, tomorrow he'll be back selling well, drugs. Well, that's his past, you know? Why did he go mess around the baby? Why go anywhere? Why did he go mess with anyway? He knew he already in trouble. Why did he go so going home? Listen, if I'm on probation, I know I'm a black woman, you know what I'm saying? If I know I'm a black woman, I'm on probation. That's I'm, you know what I'm saying? I'm not going to mess around with nobody else's baby. So I can mess up together. Like you see things like that, you have natural instincts as a, as a human being. I guess. Oh, he's human now. Oh, oh now he feels sick. Wow. He can, he can carry around guns and drugs, but soon as I see someone hurt in the wow. car, oh, now I feel like hey, I need to be a good Samaritan and help. You ever heard of a second chin? There was this guy, I couldn't stand this guy. You know what I mean? This guy I grew up with. Uh, we used to always fight, he used to always talk crap to me. You know what I'm saying? And I used to think I could see him, you know, dead. You know, that's how much I hate this guy. Lying in a pool of blood, you know. One day, I hear gunshots. I'm going around the corner. Guess who's lying on the ground? Who? The guy I hate. Wow. Wow. He was, wow. He was happy. Right? Like you liked it, right? I was happy, but then, you know, that was just the, the hood part of me. But then I had the, you know, the human side of me came out, mm -hmm. and I saw somebody dead. Mm -hmm. it broke me down, you know. Took off my shell and coat that I had just broke mm. and put it underneath his head until the cops came. And I waited with him, rolled with him on the evidence and everything. Mm. What happened to the coat? I never saw the coat again. Did he die? Yeah. Uh, that proves you're not an animal. We're yeah. humans. That's yeah, what well, he deserves. He deserved it. Moves. Didn't and he deserve it? This case, this guy that's being convicted for murder. It doesn't mean that he necessarily did it. Exactly. So we have to really think about our decisions and what we're going to do here. Because remember, he also has a little girl that's in this case as well. 
But what about her grandchildren or her children? How you think they feel? Exactly. Huh? What about the other side? But really, it was so what about the that You're the dead drunk. can't speak for themselves. I'm speaking for the dead woman. But she can't speak for herself. These <laughs> court appointed lawyers work for the state. They do not work in the interest of those they should. Okay. And we definitely need to take that into consideration when we're judging on the life of this man. Percy, a drug dealer, you know, he got a, now he got a bad lawyer, bad rap. You know what I mean? We got too many possibilities going on here. I mean, let's be for real. All right, but isn't it possible? Anything is possible. Well, I don't think he's supposed to. Who would it be? It's so many ifs. It's just. I'm saying that we. That he is not guilty. It's not enough evidence. If, if for the fifth, we all be drunk. just for some reason emulated drug dealers because they made quick money, they had the bling bling, fancy cars, and he always wanted to have enough just to do whatever it was he wanted to do. He had to have these Jordans, they were like $200. And we were coming home from church and the drug dealer was standing on the corner with the same shoes that he wanted. And you should have just seen the look in my brother's eyes, it was like, wow, those are the shoes that I want. Well, this guy gave my brother a package, okay? My brother went out on the corner and sold drugs long enough to get these shoes. Had the shoes a week. The next week he was dead. He was killed. He was murdered. So to me, I take it very seriously that we're trying to put a drug dealer back on the street to continue to sell poison to kids. You know, it, it's just, I can't fathom this idea. Same story. Wow. You know? Wow. That's right. That's right. Crazy. It's madness. But I don't think that's nothing like the story that we got that we're doing now. I don't think that have anything to do with it. It has yeah. a lot to do with it. Well, this man, God. this man, if it wasn't it. for his poison, my brother would still be alive. Do you listen? Are you yeah. listening? Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
gonna die tomorrow. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. jumped on me, broke my ribs. I was in the hospital for a week. Mm. Wow. And you, none of them got arrested. Probably because I'm black and they thought I was the cause of the problem. Mm -hmm. But you don't, you don't let your circumstances make you. You know what I'm saying? And, and I understand about your brother. And I feel for your situation. I'm sorry what happened. But we can't let situations that happen to us individually affect how we deal with this case. That's true. I agree with I mean, you. all of us got these personal stories that we take in the heart and we using that to judge this man. That don't have nothing to do with what happened with this man. Yeah. You're right. That's true. He's right. There are too many holes in this case. Just because he ran don't make him guilty. You never know what goes through a person's head in a situation like that. Like you. You scared to get involved. It may have been stupid, but what was he supposed to do? Maybe he should have just ignored her. Uh, but like you, he could not just walk over the body line in a pool of blood. So he went, you know what I'm saying, see if he could get some help. And now, like you, he's being charged with a crime he didn't commit. Sentenced to die. And all he was trying to do was help someone. As the jury reached a verdict, we have, Your Honor, 